In this video, we're going to take a look at potential energy diagrams. We're going to see how to sketch them for two-step processes. We'll focus on question three in this video. We're going to answer a few questions after sketching the diagram. We'll want to know how we can tell, looking at a potential energy diagram, how many steps were involved in the reaction. We'll also talk about whether the reaction is exo or endothermic and how to tell by looking at the diagram. And finally, we'll look at which of the steps in the mechanism was the rate determining step. So let's take a look at reaction number three. I want to pause the video here and use the information given here um, to see if you can sketch the diagram. We're given the potential energy of reactants, 400 kilojoules, intermediates at 100 kilojoules. We're not told the potential energy of the final products, though. We're given the delta H, the heat of reaction for the overall process, negative 150 kilojoules. And we're given the energy for each of the two activated complexes, AC number one and AC number two. The activated complex, you remember, is also known as a transition state. So we, that could have been labeled transition state number one and transition state number two. So let's jump in and try to sketch that diagram. I'm using a generic grid here. On the x-axis we have progress of the reaction. So the left-hand side of the x-axis would be the start of the reaction. And as you move to the right, this is towards the end of the reaction. The y-axis of a potential energy diagram is potential energy. So in this case, we're measuring it in kilojoules. So the question told us that the reactants, which are at the beginning of the reaction, had a potential energy of 400 kilojoules. So in my diagram, I'm going to put a little plateau at 400 kilojoules, and I'll label that with an R for reactants. In a two-step process, there's going to be final products somewhere over here, and then somewhere in the middle, there will be the intermediates. The intermediates are the products of the first step which then become reactants in the second step of the two-step process. We were told the intermediate energy, the energy of the intermediates, was 100 kilojoules. So here in the middle, I'm going to put a plateau at 100 kilojoules and label that intermediates. Notice that since we know where the reactants started at 400 kilojoules and we know where the intermediates are at 100 kilojoules, we could now label the delta H, the heat of reaction, for step one. Delta H for step one is the difference between those two plateaus. Because it's a falling amount, we started at 400 and went down to 100, delta H is negative, and in this case, negative 300 kilojoules per mole. Or, sorry, negative 300 kilojoules. Now, we were told that the activated co complex for the first step is at 700 kilojoules. The activated complex, you recall, is the temporary short-lived um, complex that is forms during the moment of a collision. So as the reactant particles collide, they are they form an intermediate, sorry, a, an activated complex, a transition state, before they turn into the intermediates. This activated complex had an energy of 700 kilojoules, so I'm going to go put a dot up there. And now I can draw in the first step. So there is my first hill, my first step in the potential energy diagram. Up here, I'll label activated complex number one, which was up at 700 kilojoules. The reactants started at 400 kilojoules. So if we draw an arrow from the top of the hill down to the reactants, that arrow represents the activation energy, the EA, energy of activation, which is going to be, in this case, from 400 up to 700, is going to be 300 kilojoules. Now let's take a look at step two. We were told for step two that its activated complex is up at 600 kilojoules. So I'll draw a little dot up at 600 kilojoules, and now I know how high this second step reaches. The activated complex is the top of the energy hill. The one piece of information we haven't used yet is the delta H, the heat of reaction, overall. 
we were told that the overall delta H is negative 150. The overall delta H is the difference from your reactant plateau where you began and your final product plateau where you finish. Since this delta H is negative, we know that the final products have to have less energy than the initial reactants, so they're going to be an energy somewhere down here, and it was negative 150. So if we started with our reactants at 400, and we go down by 150, we're going to finish with our products here at 250. So there's my products, and that difference from the reactant plateau to the product plateau is delta H overall. In this case, negative 150 kilojoules. We can finish the diagram by completing that. We can see now that the activation energy of step two, step two begins with your intermediates, and the activation energy goes to the top of that hill, so EA step two, I'll go back and label the, the other EA step one, this EA for step two would be from 100 all the way up to 600. So that means it's going to be 500 kilojoules. And then finally, the difference from the intermediates, where we began step two, and the products, where we finished step two, that difference is delta H for step two. In this case, it's going up from 100 to 200 and that's right, 250, so the delta H2 is positive, 150 kilojoules. Notice that delta H for step 1 plus delta H for step 2 has to equal delta H overall. Delta H for step 1 was, neg was uh, negative 300, and delta H for step 2 is positive 150, and so together, that gives me negative 150, which was the delta H of our overall reaction. Okay? There's the delta H overall. Finally, we can ask, you know, how many steps were in this process? The fact that we see two hills, there's one hill here and another hill here, or two activated complexes, implies that there were two steps. The first hill is the first step, and the second hill is the second step of the, of the mechanism. Which of those steps was the rate determining step? Well, the rate determining step is the slowest step in the mechanism. The slowest step would be the step that has the largest activation energy. Since the first step's EA was at three, was 300 kilojoules and the second step's EA was 500 kilojoules, in this case, the second step is the rate determining step, the RDS. Okay, because its EA is larger, 500 kilojoules, than step 1's EA, which was only 300 kilojoules. So there is a complete potential energy diagram for a two-step process fully labeled.